Thanks for joining us here. I'm WCIA 3 meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Wanted to update you on some severe weather that is just happening right now. Uh, we have a tornado warning that has just been issued for McLean County. This is going to be for northeastern McLean County. Uh, this particular storm now, the National Weather Service saying there's a developing tornado south and east of Chinook. That's going to be right here in this part of the storm. And so we're going to continue to watch that very closely here over the next little bit. Uh, this warning is going to continue for the next, uh, looks like, 30 minutes. And uh, bear with me here, doing some solo coverage, getting a few other things taken care of. We're also going to jump on our digital platforms. And as that happens, then we will continue this coverage until the warning drops. I suspect a new warning will be coming momentarily for Iroquois and Ford counties. So we're watching now for Fairbury, Gibson City, Colfax, Chenoa, Anchor, Cropsey, Sibley and Melvin based on where this storm is and the direction it is heading here. This is our only warning right now. In fact, that second warning just came out for Livingston County. They're issuing this warning for the storm that's coming on through and uh, have not extended into Ford County, but in the direction that it's heading here, it will move more to the south and east towards Sibley and Gibson City. So an early heads up for those areas as well. At this point, the area of rotation we're watching now is very much just southeast of Chenoa, north of Lawndale, west of Fairbury. That's going to move to the south and to the east, and as it does so then, uh, we will follow the storm. We do have a crew that is out in the field watching it, and we'll keep a close eye uh, on that storm. And so that is some good news for us here as we continue to monitor. We also are going to use our Gibson City camera to keep an eye on that. And uh, that is what we'll be doing, the tornado warning for Livingston County. Now, just the southwestern part of it does not include Pontiac. It does include... Uh, it does include areas south of Fairbury, southwest of Forest, going to include areas towards Risk and eventually towards the south and west towards Cropsey, uh, just beyond Sibley there. We're going to bring up our camera now here and uh, take a look from our Gibson City camera. I've got that camera. It faces the north and west. Off in the distance is where that storm is, still a little ways away, so we've got some time before it gets there. This storm moves south and east at about 30 miles per hour. And uh, so we will continue to watch this for the next 30 to 45 minutes until these warnings expire. I do want to mention we're focusing a lot on this tornado warning, and we will do so as long as coverage warrants. There is a flash flood warning, though, for Iroquois County. They've already had some areas with two to four inches of rain there. That flash flood warning you see crawling on the bottom of your screen is going to stay in effect through at least 6:15 tonight as more of these storms continue to push on through. All right, it is 1:34. And I'm just getting my, my digital stream pushed on here. Uh, bear with me real quick. Uh, we'll bring back the radar for you real fast. You can see some of that lightning off in the distance. Um, and uh, it's going to be for Livingston and McLean counties. 1.35 p.m. now. Uh, we are, w are watching... A tornadic storm move through parts of Illinois now. Okay, get that posted here. Again, bear with me. I'm just doing some uh, other coverage, getting our digital turned online here on this Saturday afternoon. All right, uh, so we will be streaming now on our digital platforms, and we are on... Get that last little thing turned off there. Okay, we are now streaming on our digital platforms. We are also on TV on WCIA. A couple of tornado warnings in effect now for Livingston and McLean County. It's this one storm, which is located southwest of Fairbury. Uh, that storm is the one that we are watching here. When we take a look at the circulation, it's very obvious where we've got this circulation. Maybe at this point to me, it looks like it's slightly disjointed from the storm. But nonetheless, there is definitely some shear that is taking place here with this storm. And so we are continuing to watch that now. Uh, this is for McLean and Livingston counties. The area of circulation now about seven miles northwest of Cropsey, about four miles southwest of Fairbury, moving to the south and east. It's past Chenoa, south and east of I-55. And that's where that circulation is here. I'll bring me up on screen real quick and show you real fast what we're looking at. This right here. These greens and this red is this area of circulation of the storm. This is US 24. 
You go to the east, it takes you all the way to Watsika. You cut back to the west, it gets you over towards El Paso. Right here is Illinois 47. That goes up to Dwight, down to Gibson City. Gibson City sits down there. Bloomington Normal sits over here. We're in the northeastern part of McLean County and the south and western part of Livingston County, where the circulation is here right now. That is our only warning and our only storm for the day. The one thing we have, though, is we've started to notice about an hour or so ago, as these storms cleared out, there's actually an outflow boundary that's sitting right here. And this storm has pulled in that outflow boundary. Outflow boundaries can be notorious for bringing in some enhanced rotation with them. It has a lot of, of, of uh, turbulence in them. And that's why this storm is starting to rotate here on the tail end of that storm. It is the only warning we have now with this, but it still is a storm that we've got to monitor and keep an eye on very closely here. We will watch this storm and move to the south and east. Let's talk further where this is heading. Eventually downstream, not in any warning, Ford County. Sibley, Gibson City, Elliott, maybe as far east as Paxton, then to the south end into northern Champaign County downstream. Might be an hour or so from there, maybe a little bit longer, but that would be a Fisher, Rantoul, Gifford issue if the storm continues on the track that it's heading here. Uh, you can see those bright colors showing where that circulation is developing here now. Uh, very obvious signature for us at this point. I'm going to switch to the Chicago radar. We'll get another view of it here, and we get the idea that there is certainly some turbulence right in northeastern McLean County moving to the south and east at 30 miles an hour. Uh, now that will bring it in the far southwestern portion of Livingston County. This does not include Ch uh, Pontiac. This does not include Dwight. This does not include Bloomington Normal. It does not include Ford County at this point. Ford County is next in line. We'll give you an early heads up there as the storm moves to the south and to the east. There is a severe thunderstorm warning for the rest of the storm, though, in southern Livingston County. And I'll pull up radar and show you what we're looking at here uh, to give you an idea. The storm itself here, there's likely some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds, and there could be some quarter size hail mixed in there as it moves to the south and to the east. It will move across 24. Once it does so, it'll stay south of 24. That strong part of the storm that's not tornadic but still has wind and hail is a Fairbury, Forest, Chatsworth, Roberts, Thawville, uh, perhaps Melvin issue. The tornadic part of the storm is on that southwestern flank. Our outflow boundary is cutting in here. You can see this hook developing in right there. Our tornado now would be just on the county line of Livingston and McLean County, uh, about two or three miles south of US 24, if it's anywhere moving off to the south and east. We've got to watch for Sibley next. It's awfully close to Sibley. There is no warning in Ford County, but if I were in Sibley, I'd be ready to go at a moment's notice here. I think I'll make the same call for Melvin and Gibson City at this point. We'll be watching closely, keeping an eye on things, and ready to move at a moment's notice with this particular storm. Let me check the National Weather Service chat real quick and uh, get some up updates from them, and uh, I'll do the best I can as well to keep monitoring any questions we have on our social media. We're streaming on Facebook, we are on digital platforms on the WCIA 3 weather app, and uh, we are keeping an eye on things with this particular storm uh, as it moves off to the south and to the east. The latest from it is likely 70 mile per hour winds. There may be some golf ball sized hail up in this storm now in the Fairbury area, uh, based on what I'm seeing. Would not surprise me if we started getting some big hail from Fairbury to the south and east towards Strawn, maybe as far east as Forest, quarter to golf ball hail likely, 70 mile per hour winds likely, a developing tornado also likely in the southwestern part of the storm that sits right there as it moves off to the south and to the east. The latest from the National Weather Service, they're saying this storm has everything right with it and it is uh, the severe weather potential increasing in southwestern Ford County uh, for the next little bit. Let's talk here about the tornado warning. We don't have a watch out today. This is just one storm, but we're talking about a tornado warning. This is for Livingston McLean counties. Remember, proceed to your safe place. Mobile homes are a no-go. You've got time to get to uh, a safe spot, a sturdy structure, a uh, well-built structure, a site-built structure. No driving in that area. Leave your car, head to the nearest convenience store, the nearest gas station. I know in that neck of the woods, there's not a lot there for gas stations and whatnot. I know Colfax has a case. You've got the gas station in Sibley. Uh, perhaps head home and avoid that area. When you're in a sturdy structure, remember, in, down, and up. We're inside the most interior part of your home as possible, getting down as low as we can, covering up with blankets, pillows, helmets. Even uh, the helmet thing is really important. That protects your brain. We tell kids on school visits that we go, stick a helmet on here. The most important part is your brain. We want it to protect that. And if there's any flying debris that happens to uh, intrude into your home, 
that your helmet will protect you from that. I've been in many situations in my first TV job in Mississippi, met many kids who have survived tornadoes with helmets on. So we really recommend grabbing the bicycle helmet, build a pillow fort, have a little fun here on this Saturday afternoon with the kids, and uh, seek shelter from this tornado warning. We will give the all clear for specific locations. Also, turn your television volume up as loud as you can. You can also follow this on the digital app, follow on WCI3 weather app, and be sure and uh, get more on Facebook Live. You can listen there from your safe spot as well. Let's talk specifically about downstream. This is for southwestern Ford County, Sibley, Garber, Gibson City, Guthrie, Melvin, Elliott, perhaps as far as Paxton. We're downstream from this. If you're in a mobile home, you've got some time to get to a safe place and uh, move for ahead of the storm. You've you got time downstream to do that. Do that now. Be prepared to seek shelter. Head to your safe spot. Maybe clear out your spot in the cellar or the basement or inside your interior closet. Have your phone charging. It's always a good idea. And arrange that safe place. Flashlight, uh, you might need that just in case any power outages occurs. And then, of course, check the WCI 3 weather app. Make sure you've got your, your current location programmed in there uh, so you can get updates as needed. We do know in this part of the world, uh, Cropsey has sounded the sirens, and rightfully so. And uh, the storm now near Fairbury, it's south of Fairbury, about, about two or three miles, uh, moving to the south and to the east at 25 miles an hour. Not moving all that fast. Still moving at a, enough of a pace where it won't just sit over the same areas, but we'll see that storm carry into Ford County here before long. So we are watching very closely the southwestern part of Ford County downstream from this. Do have a report. Uh, Cropsey has sounded the sirens. There is Chinoa sirens sounding, and there is a funnel cloud confirmed with this from spotters that is rotating southwest of, let's see, uh, that'd be a little bit ago. It'd be southeast of Chinoa about six miles it looks like from this storm so north of colfax now we've got a um, a a uh, area of rotation with the storm um just texting on my spotter my dad's out there right now he's in gibson city i had him go out in the storm as soon as we saw it starting to develop and so i'm looking to see if he's got any information and um um just sending him getting some information on what he has there so we continue to watch this storm we'll show you the velocity product we look at storm tracker doppler like that that is the general rain you know what's the intensity of it but this here shows us how the storm is moving we look at the radar in lincoln right now i believe yes i've got the lincoln one pulled up so green colors are moving towards the radar red colors are moving away Here's your toward motion moving southwest. There's your motion moving north and east. That rotation now is south of Fairbury, west of Strom, and is probably sitting about three or four miles north of Cropsey, uh, five or six, maybe seven miles nor west and north of Sibley as it continues its move to the south and to the east. And so we will continue to monitor this as the warning goes until 2.15 for the affected areas. This is a look in Gibson City. It's hard to make out on the screen here. What I'm looking at is right in here. I can see there's a dark area, and it looks like there's a little bit of a tail cloud there, which gives me this indication there may be a wall cloud that's developing uh, or in place right in that area. Let me bring it full screen for you, and uh, we'll take a look at that. And you'll be able to see uh, this uh, storm from the Gibson City camera. It's still a ways away. So you, it's 10 miles to Sibley, uh, another five or so miles to Cropsey. So this storm's still about a good 15 minutes or so, uh, 15 miles, I should say, from that camera, but it's about the best we can do at this point, and we'll continue to monitor and keep an eye on it for the next little bit. Uh, we still have the warning in place here. This Gibson City camera is at the hospital on the north side of town. We just got an extension of the severe thunderstorm warning into Ford County. If you're in Gibson City, you just got that alert. Also in Sibley and other areas here. And I'll pull that map up here in a second as we continue to watch this uh, severe weather move on through. One storm is all we've got, but it is on the outflow boundary, and it is in the right spot for this to happen. Uh, and that is why we've got this coverage continuing here until at least 2.15, it appears, uh, barring any any additions or cancellations from the National Weather Service. Uh, so they're saying 70 mile per hour winds and golf ball size hail likely now in Ford County. Let me get this, this uh, thing taken care of here real quick. I'm trying to adjust my graphics because I want to get up. Um, I want to get in my, okay, hang on here. So we need to press the, 
Again, a little one man band here in the week, but that's okay. We're here always and watching those storms for you. I'm just getting a few things squared away on the backside so I can get my. Um, my Apple TV ready because I think I'm going to want to switch over and show you some things um, across the area as we watch here. So there's my Apple TV. Let me get this connected and I'm going to switch over to another camera here real quick and to just give you an idea of what we're looking at as well. So there we go. We're getting that in. Okay, this, um, bear with me here. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's switch over to our camera here. I'm going to use an app called Radar Scope here, real quick, with you. Uh, it kind of gives a different view of what this storm is doing. See these bright blues right here and these reds? This is where that circulation is sitting here. There's Anchor. Here's Cropsey. Strawn is here. Forest and Fairbury sit up here. Colfax is down there. Gibson City is down here. This is on that bend in Livingston County and the northeastern part of McLean County as we're watching and, and keeping an eye on it. I'm going to switch radars as well to the Lincoln radar. A uh, great app here that really helps us see what's going on. That's where the circulation is sitting now here, northwest of Cropsey, north of Anchor. We've got the tornado warning that's in effect for southwestern Livingston and northeastern McLean counties. There you can see right here, what we're looking at is this is the core, in fact, as I zoom out a little bit, a very classic supercell structure taking advantage of the instability today. There is a lot of instability. Uh, so there's some big hail now between Fairbury and Strom. That's moving to the south and to the east. We see this new severe thunderstorm warning that's been included here from Ford County, Gibson City, Sibley, Melvin. Elliott, Perduville, from Paxton West, including 10 Mile Grove. It's going to include the southwestern part of the county, too. This is where large hail is heading, and eventually this may be upgraded for parts of the area to a tornado warning based on what I'm seeing. We've got this inflow notch in here, and uh, that inflow notch is where the winds are pulling in. It's feeding on that instability and riding that outflow boundary. This is where our circulation is going to be as it continues to the south and to the east here for the next little bit. I'm going to pull up our debris tracker here. Normally, we use this as a way to see what's in the atmosphere. Is there something being detected that shouldn't be there? And that is not the case at this point, though we see these blues here. That's not debris. What that is is that's the inflow winds just clearing out here ahead of that circulation. We get some strong inflow. That's when we get that circulation to spin up in that area. But there's no indication to me at this point that there's a tornado down. Uh, we are seeing it strengthened, though, and that may change here very soon based on all indications of this particular storm as it moves to the south and to the east. Here you can see that general progression. That center track there is going to come very close to Gibson City. The hail core also rapidly increasing southeast of Fairbury. Uh, really concerned about have a half dollar to golf ball size hail now from Strawn to Sibley to Melvin down towards Paxton. Uh, maybe far enough east in the Paxton area. We'll watch even Elliott as this storm carries off to the south and east. So we're going to watch it very closely here for the next little bit. Let's get a view back to our Gibson City camera now and we'll show you here that uh, you can see in the distance that wall cloud, the edge of it, uh, if you look real close on the TV, right over the left side of the middle school there is where this is, um, where this is at. Uh, you zoom in real close and you'll, you'll get a look at it here as it continues off to the south and east. This is coming right towards that camera, folks. So we've got to watch and keep a very close eye on this particular storm uh, for the next little bit. All right, just getting views on the and the Apple TV, and let me get this up. This is a view from my dad. He's out chasing now. Uh, we're going to pop back over to the other camera real quick. And uh, he just sent this here. This right here, I think this is, this looks like it's going to be Anchor or maybe Colfax. This is a bottom view. This is a very low wall cloud right in here. And this whole thing is spinning. That's the right edge. That's your inflow tail pulling into the storm, feeding on instability. Uh, this storm's spinning right here, the updraft, and I'll see if I can confirm a location, but to me, it looks like that's either going to be Anchor. That might be Colfax. I know he was heading west of 9 and, and zooming to the north, and uh, so this storm really moving quickly to the south and east at 25 miles an hour. A very healthy storm, such a low base on it as well. We can see it from much further away on our camera in Gibson City, and I'm keeping an eye on that there, but we have spotters looking at this reporting rotation 
location. This is my dad that's out there chasing. You know, we've grown up doing this together for years, and so now he's out and I'm here. Uh, so we're bringing you that, that coverage with this storm for the next little bit. All right, so as we continue to watch here, we've still got the Gibson City camera up. Um, yeah, we just got production coming on it. Uh, if you guys want to work with Dallas and take control, we can do some double boxes. You're not uh, that's fine. If you want to take care of that, too, we're just on digital platforms and on CIA as we've got this tornado coverage. So they're going to take care of that and um, move. Watch this storm as it moves off to the south. So let me forward that report. Okay. Uh, let me bring the radar back up. We'll talk about it. Um, <coughs> Um, bring that radar screen back up and um, what we've got. We've just got one storm, but this storm is on the tail end and it is impressive looking here as it moves off to the south and to the east. We're centered now primarily on Livingston, Ford, and McLean counties, right in the where all those counties come together Sibley, Colfax, Anchor. Uh, we can give an all clear now for US 24. That's going to be Fairbury, Forest, and Chatsworth. The hail core, the tornado threat, is south of US 24 at this point in the southern part of Livingston County. And so we'll continue to uh, watch this storm as it moves off to the south and to the east. In Ford County, this will not affect the Panhandle. This is not going to affect uh, Piper City northward. This will be a south and southwestern Ford County issue as we watch. I suspect that there will be a new tornado warning coming shortly for Ford County, including Sibley, Gibson City, Elliott. Based on what we're seeing here, um, so we will watch and uh, keep an eye on this, and just kind of looking at all these different reports we're getting, uh, getting some more photos as well from that same area. Very low wall cloud in the anchor area. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to the south and to the east. Seeing some questions where this is heading. You know, we're not talking a lot about too far downstream, but on the general track here, on the southeast track. There's not really a lot to stop this storm once it gets past uh, Gibson City into northern Champaign County. So we may have this storm that's a little bit of nuisance for us here for a while as, um, <coughs> as it's carrying to the south and to the east. And so that's something that we're going to watch and keep a close eye on here for a little bit. Um, you know, I don't want to say for sure it's, it's going to or not be on Ford County, but I'd be watching in northern Champaign County and eventually Vermilion County, but at this point our main focus is as downstream as the storm moves into Ford County. We'll be watching closely here uh, for the next little bit. Getting some more pictures in. Uh, this is an impressive looking storm here. I'm getting these photos saved and we'll continue to watch and uh, keep an eye on it here. And I need to get some of these photos posted onto social media so that way the National Weather Service can see what we've got coming into us here. But this is a rapidly rotating storm moving to the south and east. Plenty of wind shear. We've got the outflow boundary it's riding. And so um, and uh, it will continue to the south and to the east. Okay, uh, so there's pictures I'm posting on Twitter right now, and I'm tagging the National Weather Service. And um, we've got to tag both Chicago and Lincoln. It's, it's kind of splitting. So Livingston County and Ford County are National Weather Service and Chicago. Then you've got McLean County, which is National Weather Service and Lincoln. They're in communications and talking about this particular storm. Um, and they're issuing those warnings concurrently. That's why those polygons look a little funky for each area here. But um, it is... Still something that we're continuing to watch and keep a close eye on here. We will monitor things. And um, let me get this last photo in here. And one more just came on in. And then I'm going to show you these photos as well uh, as we move on through. So uh, the storm now is still moving to the south and east of 25. Um, we've got reports now of rotation over Colfax area. Um, and the wall cloud, very obvious at this point. So my dad is out. He's out with my Aunt Becky. So uh, Becky Reiners and Daniel Dickey, they're both out here watching the storm as it carries to the south and to the east. Okay, got that report tweeted out. Let me show you some of these photos real quick, and I can give you a vantage point of it. And so we're going to switch over. Um, and pr my production team is in the back. They're kind of getting set up on things as well and making sure we can can look at it. Uh, so, 
Let me just switch back over here to the quad, and we'll show you. This is an early report from this morning. Some of the storms that came through Ford and Iroquois County had some small hail with it. We're probably more than likely now dealing with ping pong, golf balls in southern Livingston County as these storms move on through. This is that look earlier we showed you, that wall cloud. This looks like it's going to be Colfax. I think Anchor is, is kind of over here from based on what he's told me. Uh, there's another view of it, and what I see here is that right here, you see where that's wrapping up? They're looking kind of to the north and to the west, so it looks like that storm is wrapping up in this area here. And another view of that really low wall cloud that's zoomed on in. And then a very peculiar look here to the storm in the south side. There's been reports of funnels earlier. There's likely lots of rising motion and even some rotation there. Whether it tightens up enough to get to be a uh, confirmed tornado or not, we'll wait and see. I haven't had a confirmed tornado report come in yet from this, but we do have rotation. We've had reports of funnel cloud. We've got spotters that are with eyes on it here on the storm. Let's take a look here a little bit closer on radar scope and, uh, and uh, look at what we're, we're seeing. First off, in my mind, it looks like to me the storm is diving more south. And a couple of things will happen in that scenario here. One, you can make out the outflow boundary right here being pulled in. If the core of the storm goes more south, then it will potentially cut off this circulation right here a little bit, and that may cause it to weaken over the next little bit. But it will continue to bring a large hail threat. Instead of going more southeast towards Sibley, that may carry it more Sibley down Highway 47 towards Gibson City. So we're going to watch that here. Uh, this particular storm, the National Weather Service saying there is up to golf ball size hail and 70 mile per hour winds with it. Your core is now north of Cropsey by about two or three miles. And I tell you what, I sure hope there's not any hail because all the farmers in this area have got some beautiful crops this time of year. And we start getting a quarter to golf ball hail and 70 mile per hour winds, and it will not end well for those folks there. So, you know, say a prayer for the farmers. It's been a rough year for them. I'm sure they're nervously watching. I'm nervously watching too, knowing that there's some hail in this particular area moving to the south and east, and we'll likely hear from some of them over the next little bit. Downstream severe thunderstorm warning for Ford County includes Sibley, Gibson City, Melvin, Elliott. Uh, 10 Mile Grove, Purdueville. You take uh, 116 north towards Roberts. Roberts will probably be in the heavy rain, the lightning. The tornado threat will be well west of Roberts. It's well away from Piper City and Kempton. We're not worried about northern Ford County, but this storm moving to the south and east is something we've still got to watch. As I switch over to velocity here, there's still signs that this storm is feeding plenty on the instability that's in place with this outflow boundary. This red here is red moves away, and that's feeding into the storm. That circulation now is sitting northeast of Colfax uh, by about four or five miles or so. Let me just measure that out to make sure that I'm... It uh, looks like here about four to five miles or so from the center to Colfax is where that circulation is. And uh, so that's what we continue to watch. We'll watch Sibley, Gibson City next in line. No tornado warning now, but we're watching closely. This still basically is for rural areas west of Strawn, south of Fairbury, north and east of Colfax. Primarily here, uh, the next town that's in line is Cropsey, and it's very close to you now, Cropsey, uh, with that circulation sitting on the county line north of town for Livingston and in McLean County. Did just get a new severe thunderstorm warning. This is interesting. Remember we talked about that southward push? First off, a couple things. This right here is that outflow boundary into the storm. But this new severe thunderstorm warning just came out for the eastern half of McLean County. I think that's a sign. They also see that southward movement with it. And that southward movement, uh, we'll see. It could potentially cut off the original circulation, but then that may allow for a new circulation to strengthen, especially as this outflow boundary moves slowly to the south. So we'll watch and see. It could go either way at this point. Um, and then it looks like here for uh, Eastern McLean County, let me just check real quick, and I'm going to jump back over to our graphics here. They have opted, to, it looks like they've opted to, um, it looks like they've opted to replace the warning. And uh, I think production in the back may have control now. You have control? Okay, if we can, go ahead and bring my Max 2 full screen real quick. And uh, then I'm going to switch my things here. Um, just so I can keep our digital platform streamed and synced correctly uh, right now. So that's going to take a little button switch in my end. Um, okay, so we've got it switched over to audio and video for digital and online is going to be on the production. So go ahead and bring it back to me real quick here. Uh, we're going to update real quick in the storm. 
and keep an eye on it. The severe thunderstorm warning continues for McLean, Ford, and Livingston counties. They have opted to drop the tornado warning for McLean County and replace it with a severe thunderstorm warning tornado possible tag. A sign that storm moving south at this point, maybe it's weakening a little bit, like we kind of mentioned. Um, it is still, though, going to be carrying off to the south and east. Some golf ball size hail very much could be a possibility along Highway 47 through Ford County. And uh, some 60 to 70 mile per hour winds may also be something to watch with this particular storm as it moves off to the south and to the east. So just getting. Um, <clears throat> Just checking updates here real quick. Uh, Colfax is reporting sustained 60 to 70 mile per hour winds and from a spotter, and they have the sirens going off in Colfax. I don't blame one bit here with this storm and the what it's uh, been showing here. At this point, my tornado warning has dropped, but the severe thunderstorm warning still has a considerable tag on it, which is used for a damage indicator uh, when we're talking about um, you know potential wind and hail damage. And so here we go. That three o'clock tornado, uh, the three o'clock severe thunderstorm warning for Ford County could be golf ball size hail and 70 mile per hour winds. The tornado also possible with that as it carries south and east. And then that McLean County warning also has that tornado possible tag here. And so we'll continue to watch. That one goes until 245. The Livingston County warning is set to expire here in about 15 minutes or less. It's 203 right now. Uh, now it's 203. This goes until 215. Golf ball size hail and 70 mile per hour winds likely. And we've got that report of 60 to 70 mile per hour winds in the Colfax area. So we're watching this very closely keeping an eye on it as we um, look here in a minute. All right, I've got some video that's coming in, and uh, let me just watch it real quick here in the sign, and then we're going to head back to the quad, I think, and show you it before we, before we make a decision on uh, what we're going to do next um, with our coverage. But they're saying that um, the warnings... Okay, let me just check the National Weather Service. They're continuing the warning here. Um, for 60 mile per hour winds and quarter size hail. So what we're gonna do here is very shortly, we're actually gonna wrap up our coverage um, on TV. We will stay on digital platforms though, and then we'll be ready to go, um, ready to go back on air if needed here. But I wanna hold for a little bit longer because I'm suspicious that this is not done yet based on what I'm seeing here. All right, uh, if we can, let's bring the quad up. And I'm gonna show you some of this rotation that is being spotted in the area here. There we go. You can almost see here on the end how their swirl is centered right in there. And um, that coming in just moments ago, that's where we've got to watch if this rotation can tighten, if we can produce something here. This near the anchor area. And then I've got another video that's come on in. Um, let me get that other video up. This here is a look at the wall cloud as a whole. There's your tail cloud from in the storm your circulation forms and it's going to be right in here on the left side of the screen where we've got that as they pan. So we're getting a good view of that from my dad and Aunt Becky out in the field. They are, this is Route 9 right here that they're on. Um, I'm sorry, that's going to be, um, that's going to be Colfax Road, I think, based on where they're at up north of Route 9. So we'll continue to watch. And then those other pictures we had also um, right here. This is an earlier picture. And then we had another picture come in earlier from the Colfax and the Anchor area. Let's go ahead and bring Max 1 back full screen real quick. Uh, I'm sorry, Max 2 full screen if we can. Um, just to show you this storm, what I want to do is I want to um, kind of read what the National Weather Service is saying. Um, at this point, the National Weather Service is now saying it's moving more to the south. And that's some good news for us here in Gibson City and in Sibley, where it may stay just outside of our area into the eastern part of McLean County. That south movement may also be temporarily weakening the rotation, but there still are spotters that are reporting this. Uh, you can see here that southward movement. So the hail core likely now comes down the county line on McLean and Ford County west of Highway 47. Not by much. I'm not saying we're in the clear in Gibson City or Sibley. We've still got our own problems to deal with here, but that should keep the the rotating part of the storm in McLean County. And we're going to watch this closely and keep an eye on what happens with this here. We just got a report of quarter size hail and a 60 mile an hour sustained winds from this here in the northeastern part of McLean County. And uh, that'd be north and east of Colfax near the Cropsey area, based on what I'm seeing as the storm is taking that hard right turn. 
Sometimes that'll pinch off the initial rotation, but a hard right turn in a storm is always concerning because it will eventually mean the rotation has to increase as it latches onto that outflow boundary. But maybe that will keep it over more rural areas in west of uh, Highway 47. So we're going to watch very closely and uh, keep an eye on this here for the next little bit. Um, I just, I just, the National Weather Service is describing this as a dangerous supercell moving to the south and east, and I agree with them here. I think we're going to get some quarter size hail and larger out of this based on what we're looking at, and that's why we're sticking with this for a little bit longer because I'm not convinced that the rotation is done weakening just yet. I want to stay with it and keep a very close eye on that. Of course, I've got my Gibson City camera up, and we'll look at that in a little bit um, as we watch that storm come on in. Let me go ahead and here and pull the hail up real quick on this storm. Uh, the hail size. And uh, what I want to do is show you where that hail core is. First off, it's between Colfax and Anchor now moving to the south. And as it does so, you see those pink shades. Those pink shades here. You can go ahead and bring me on camera too if you want. Those pink shades right in here is indicating larger than quarter size hail. Now understand we've got a lot of heat out there, so the, some of that is melting as it falls, but it would not surprise me if we had ping pong to golf ball size hail reports come in between Colfax and Anchor as it slides to the south. I know our, our uh, director, Jalen, in the back, he's got family and friends in Colfax, and he'll let me know if he gets any reports too. That moving more south and southeast, uh, it'll come across the curves in Route 9 at the Saybrook exit there, and it takes the Saybrook Road to the south, so we'll watch in Saybrook. It's still very close to Gibson City. The hail should stay just to the west of Sibley. Uh, my friend T.J. Quinn, he's the fire chief up at the Sullivan Township Fire Department. He says they're heading to the west to watch the storm and keep an eye on it with the fire department. Gibson City also going to be keeping a close eye on that here. Maybe it will miss Gibson City proper, but it will move to the south and southeast. It will come close. We still may get some hail in those areas, but at this point, I'm more interested in the curves at County Line Road on Route 9 and the Saybrook curves based on that right turn from the storm uh, with the hail size here moving on in. Very much Colfax. I think we'll get some reports from Colfax and Anchor if they're not already coming in um, from this storm. We have no immediate... Uh, we do not immediately believe that this is going to produce a tornado at this point. The tornado warnings have been dropped. We still have the severe thunderstorm warnings. It's likely that there's some good hail in there. And you see that red outline from McLean County here? That red outline indicates that they've added the tornado possible tag to the box. What that means is they're watching that rotation very closely. It's a step below a tornado warning and a very small step here at this point based on what I'm seeing. Other thing to mention, again, Iroquois County, Benton County, Indiana, that flash flood warning, that's going to continue until 615. There's been some parts of Iroquois County today that as of lunchtime had, um, okay, just seeing that there, uh, at lunchtime, they had two to four inches in the county, and they may get another two to four inches out of this before all is said and done. I'm just getting reports now of golf ball size hail and 70 plus mile per hour winds with this storm, and uh, let me just type in the address. Um, to get a confirmation of exactly where that is. Um, it's going to be 3850 East, 2200 North. That's going to be up in the northern part of the county here, uh, very near... I'm trying to get my county roads to pop up here. Um, so 3850 East, 2200 North Road, uh, and that's going to be the Colfax area. And make sure I've got my, my 3850 East, 2250 North. Uh, there's some golf ball size hail being reported with this storm. Um, in that area. And so that's what the local emergency management is reporting um, with this particular storm. So we have a couple different areas here. I mean, we see right in here, northern McLean, northeastern McLean County, near the Triple Point Ford, McLean, Livingston County there, northwest of Sibley. Yeah, there's some hail right there coming down the county line for, by Cropsey and Anchor. And then Colfax also, near or just east of Colfax. I suspect they're getting a lot of wind there at this point from this particular storm um, with this area here. Um, so it sounds like Cropsey is resounding the sirens due to the high winds, the high straight line winds. And I don't blame them one bit. That's why we're keeping our coverage here. This is a dangerous storm, folks, moving uh, south and east here. You see those bright colors. 
what I want to do here is talk about the rotation specifically, and then we'll talk about the strong straight line winds and the rear flank downdraft winds that are in that. Right in here, you see these bright reds? That's our inflow into the storm. These greens here are very strong winds that are wrapping around the back side of that storm and will push out here. And so within that storm, there's a very strong core about a mile or two east of Koufax proper, very near anchor, and then uh, south and west of Cropsey, where we've got in the rain a lot of strong wind. The hail is also there. Uh, and it continues off to the south and east. We've got siren reports in Colfax as well. I don't blame them. With 70 mile per hour winds, you'll have trees and power lines come down and that type of situation. They've upped the wording on that to considerable damage likely in, in eastern McLean County. I do want to mention, the first thing is this does not include Bloomington Normal. This does not include the I-55 corridor. It does include Route 9 from 165 East, Ellsworth, Aerosmith, Saybrook, Colfax, Anchor, Cropsey, even over towards Cooksville, though I think Cooksville might be a little far to the west uh, with this particular storm. All right, Pat Harmit just sent me a message. He says he's got some hail two miles east of Cropsey. Pat, if you can, get a size estimate. That'd be helpful here. I know uh, he's a farmer out there and uh, probably does not enjoy hearing that, but any reports we can get are appreciated. Uh, golf ball size hail being reported in the Anchor area and uh, some power outages now coming in the Colfax area from this storm as it moves on through. This storm is slow moving, too, because it, when storms take a right turn, oftentimes they'll anchor on a boundary, turn to the right, and that eventually will help that rotation pick up. But it also may very well allow for uh, the storm to slow down a little bit. And that's what we're seeing here. This storm moving to the south at a whopping 15 miles an hour. That's not very fast at all here. It'll take a long time to push to the south uh, through McLean County. And so we talked about that southeastward track, Fisher, Rantoul, off towards Vermilion County. At this point, I'm thinking more that southern track is going to carry it uh, for, towards Farmer City, White Heath, Muhammad, maybe Fisher we'll have to watch. We're still keeping an eye on Gibson City. We're giving an all clear now to Roberts, Paxton, Purdueville, 10 Mile Grove, uh, and we'll continue to watch in Champaign County, but this storm now moving south is something to watch. Okay, I'm just getting some video in, and uh, let me just look at it here. This is from downtown Colfax, and if we, what I'm gonna do here is, um, I want to get this full screen real quick, and then we're going to pull it up. Seems like my phone is not allowing me to do that. Uh, Jalen, do you have a way in the back to download that video and get it into the system yourself? Okay, she's going to work on that here, because I can see the video, and it's some strong wind. Uh, he's got that in. Um, or, Jalen, if you've got the, it, you may have sent that direct. If you can just text me that video, I'll be able to pull it in myself as well. I know you sent it to me on Twitter, uh, but we can get that. Um, taken care of. All right, um, so th at this point, the good news is here for Ford County, the worst of the storm will stay west of Highway 47. We still are going to get some wind and some rain in Gibson City. That uh, also has the potential for some hail, but the hail core be out by the county line. I know out in that direction, the county line, uh, you know, we're looking for a Gibson City camera off in the distance. We'll get some rain and perhaps some wind in here, but the worst of the storm now is going to be off to the north and west. Uh, it'll be out uh, four, five, six miles. Something else to note, you can see here on the top of the screen, the clouds moving from left to right. That's the inflow pulling into the storm here and uh, continuing to move on in. Okay, so I should be able to get this video up now on the, on Max One full screen. Um, We got that here, Jalen. Are you ready for, for Max One full screen? There we go. So here's the video that came from Colfax. This is downtown Colfax. And Jalen, if you could tell me uh, who sent this video in. Your dad did, Jalen's dad. Look, we got, this is a family ordeal here, folks. Uh, where we've got my director's dad's out from Colfax here. We've got my dad and my aunt out watching these storms. Again, this came from downtown Colfax, where they've had 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, there are some power outages reported in the area, and uh, they've got three miles west of Cropsey. There's been golf ball size hail and wind gust of 70 mile per hour with this particular storm moving to the south at 15 miles an hour. It sounds like, folks, that we are repeating a lot. Uh, the same things here. That's what happens when we have a slow moving storm that's you know, moving at 15 miles an hour. Some of these events will get 50, 60 mile per hour winds uh, with storms, and that, I gotta 
um, you know, or these storms will move at 50, 60 mile per hour, and they'll move through quickly. We're talking about one town, and then five minutes later, we're talking about the next town. We're still talking about the same areas with the storm here as it moves to the south. So, what I'm going to do here, Jalen, is if we can, at about uh, a minute, 90 seconds from now, at 2.18, we're going to end our television coverage. We're going to give you 90 seconds to jump over to our digital platform. We'll continue to stream on the WCIA3 weather app. We'll continue to stream also on Facebook. You can go to Chief Meteorologist Kevin Leidy. You can go to my Facebook page. You can go to Jack Gerfin's Facebook page. You can go to the news page. You can go to Twitter and stream it there on our, our profiles as well. We've got it streaming online, and we will continue to do so. Uh, but we're going to end our coverage and take a a little break on TV and focus on the digital side. The moment that a tornado warning is issued, we will jump right back on, or the moment we see the need to come back on with updates on television, then we will do so. Uh, but we're about 50 seconds away, so be sure and jump on over to our coverage on digital platforms if you so wish. Let's give a real quick and last all clear. All clear, Livingston County, you're done with this storm. We hope there's no more storms for the day, but it's still something we're going to watch here. This now is the western part of the southwestern part of Ford County, the eastern part of McLean County. The storm now over Anchor and Colfax moving to the south with uh, 70 mile per hour winds and some golf ball size hail. And that's why we're going to continue our digital platform here. The indication of rotation, not as obvious. It's still something we're going to watch, and so we will watch that closely and keep you updated. I'm meteorologist Jacob Dickey. Thanks for joining us on TV. We'll be on digital platforms for you here uh, for as long as needed, and we'll see you here if necessary. Now back to your regularly scheduled program.